Welcome, it's Dinaum and welcome to This Week in Crypto. This week we had really, really good news uh, in uh, crypto space, as well as uh, we had the bounce from 50k dollars to now for $58,000. And we just broke through this trend line here, which is really, really good. So it looks like we have a bullish week ahead in the crypto markets and in Bitcoin as well. So if I were a betting man, uh, this is what I think uh, Bitcoin might do in the short term. So something like this, that we test the all time highs, then we come and retest this trend line here. And from here, uh, we actually go to the new all time highs. This line that I drew here is basically my last week's prediction. And we followed it pretty pretty nicely, except except the break, breakout happened a little bit faster than I was actually expecting. But anyway, we came here exactly to fifty thousand dollars, almost fifty thousand and two hundred dollars, something like that, three hundred dollars, and we had a bounce from there. So if you bought the dip, congratulations to you, that was an excellent move. If you bought some alts, then you have made really good gains probably as well. So anyway, congratulations to you if you bought the dip. And there are still, still some uh, altcoins out there that are still in the dip. So even if you did not buy the dip yet, there are still some altcoins that you may want to look at if you just look at which altcoins have popped off and which ones haven't done that yet. So there may be some opportunities. I will talk about some opportunities at the end of the video if you want to stick around for that as well. Anyway, let's talk, take a look at the news that happened last week, as well as let's take a look at the on-chain analytics afterwards. Pretty much the biggest news that happened uh, last week or this week is basically what happened today. So Visa, they are now allowing payment settlements using cryptocurrency. So this is massive because if you normally just go to a shop and buy coffee, for example, uh, the actual settlement of that payment will take about a day or two. There's some costs involved and it takes some time for the actual coffee shop to actually receive the money instead of getting them getting it uh, instantly as well. So there are some issues with the current system. And now that they allow cryptocurrency payments, that will just speed up the process as well as make it cheaper. And uh, it's just going to scale a lot better in the future as well. And of course, it is bullish for cryptocurrencies. So this news is pretty bullish for Ethereum as well as the CRO token. And I will explain why. So Visa has launched the pilot program with payment and crypto platform crypto.com. And they plan to offer options to more partners later this year that basically have a cryptocurrency Visa card. And next, and this is basically just another news, but it was crammed here in this news. So I will just talk about it here. So Elon Musk said that you can now buy uh, Teslas with Bitcoin. So this is pretty good for adoption as well. Uh, really nice to see. <clears throat> but now let's back, go back to the actual story here. So traditionally, if you use a card like crypto.com, you, and you pay for a coffee, the digital currency held in a cryptocurrency wallet would need to be converted into traditional money first. So uh, for example, on crypto.com, you may have some USDC and maybe you earn uh, money on the earn plan here, but then you have to convert that into uh, euros or uh, pounds or US dollars. But in the future, you can simply have USDC over there and just use that. So that's pretty cool that uh, there's less steps that you have to take to actually use the card. And they will also offer a credit card system using that in the future as well. Uh, that's pretty cool that when it actually goes live with crypto.com. But anyway, uh, the settlement will be done using Ethereum blockchain and they will be using Anchorage, which is a custodian service for crypto.com to actually send the USDC via Ethereum blockchain to Visa's Ethereum address at Anchorage. So that's basically the uh, route that the money will actually go through. And here is the same announcement from Visa.com. You can read through this. They actually had a, uh, uh, a quote from Chris Marsalek, the CEO of Crypto.com here as well. And they basically explained the uh, same situation here. If you want to take a look at this, pretty good news, but it doesn't end there. This is good for Crypto.com because here, if you take a look at the CEO's Twitter, he's saying here that to further support this effort, crypto.org chain will work to enable native USDC issuance on its network later this year as well. So you will have USDC on crypto.com or crypto.org chain as well. So this is all, all in all pretty good news for crypto.com. I'm pretty surprised that the price did not move any higher than it actually did. It only went up about, I think, five or six percent, at least at the time of making this video. But anyway, overall, pretty good news for crypto overall Ethereum and uh, Zero. Next, 
uh, Bank of International Settlements chief says cryptocurrency is being used to evade, uh, evade laws and is calling for more regulation. So this is no new, uh, news news, but it is something that just keeps popping up because people want to always ask, are you going to add more regulation to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? So I don't know if we will ever see those or not, but uh, that's the stance on, uh, I think he's working for EU. Next. Uh, Oak Tree Capital founder Howard Mark changes his mind about Bitcoin as demand source and price jumps 10x. So Oak Tree's capital Howard Mark has warmed up to Bitcoin now and is a little bit sad that he dismissed uh, it too soon before. So now what he thinks about Bitcoin is that while Bitcoin doesn't have an intrinsic value, the same can be said for the dollar and many other things that have value like paintings and diamonds. I've been more sensitized to the supply demand case of Bitcoin, which is of course what we are in this channel looking at as well. So there's all, all these arguments about why people want it and the demand and the demand grows and the supply doesn't grow. Then the economics tell us that the price goes up. So now he understands Bitcoin, which is pretty good that uh, more people from these traditional banking systems are understanding Bitcoin are, are now onboarding on the Bitcoin train as well. Next, New Zealand fund invests 5% in Bitcoin. And this is really good news uh, as more institutions outside the United States are also buying Bitcoin. So it just further impro improves and uh, increases this uh, game theory that if um, more people buy Bitcoin, then other people want to buy Bitcoin as well because they don't want to be left behind. So this is really good news to see more institutional adoption for Bitcoin uh, as uh, overall. Next, 77% of Americans are concerned about rising inflation. And this is not something that uh, uh, I'm happy about, but it is something which is inevitable, inevitable because of the money printing. So if 77% 77, 77 are worried about in, uh, coming inflation, then that also means that they're looking for an, an alternative method. And that would be, of course, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because of the tokenomics of Bitcoin. So if they are looking for an, an alternative, then they may actually buy, uh, go ahead and buy Bitcoin as well. And if we take a look at the inflation, uh, you can look at the CPI, which is the consumer price index. But of course, inflation hits consumer prices the latest. It of course goes to the uh, institutional assets first because the world is now heavily fi uh, financialized. So almost anything can be financialized. And the money, whenever it enters the financial system, it goes to the asset prices first before it goes to the consumer prices at the end of the day. But anyway, if you basically double the amount of USD in circulation in about a, a, a year and a little bit over, that will eventually come into inflation. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. So in my opinion, this will come into inflation when the... Uh, what is it called the volume the velocity of money actually increases so people start to spend their dollars and money again more because the velocity of money has actually been going down but uh, when it when it starts to go up that's when we will see more and more and more uh, inflation coming to the markets as well anyway this is what people are worried worried about with inflation uh, this was something that i was not super happy about to see but after looking at it further, it's not that bad, actually. So since the end of February 2021, total uh, assets under management across all digital asset investment, investment products have increased to $58.7 billion as of 22nd of March. And this, uh, the reason why it's it may not be good is because the increase has actually slowed down compared to January to February jump. So this is not a super good jump. But I think a big reason for this is not that institutions are not buying, but just because the asset prices have not gone up. If not anything, uh, Ethereum price has actually gone down. And I don't know exactly as of March 2020. Let's actually take a look at the price of Bitcoin on March 2020. It was about 58. Uh, 58 and if it was here on 22nd of february yeah they took the same exact snapshot of bitcoin during these times so the price was exactly the same during these times so uh, i just think it's not because the prices have not gone up that's why uh, it looks like it has a lot done but i don't think that's the case here 
And next, uh, we already covered this story. Uh, New York governor Cuomo is launching blockchain powered vaccination passports. So this is probably bad for privacy. I don't exactly know, but is it good for crypto? After reading through this article, it's not looking too good for crypto because it is built on IBM's blockchain powered digital health, pa health pass. So I don't know uh, if it's bullish for crypto. I don't really see any reason why it would be. But anyway, uh, this is something that may, may be coming to United States or at least New York. Maybe bad or uh, neutral for privacy. I don't exactly know. Next, next let take, let's take a look at some of the on-chain analytics that I was looking at this week. So a uh, Bitcoin on exchange reserves is still going down. So whenever this uh, red number is going down, this is really good for the price of Bitcoin because it means that people want to hold their Bitcoin and they don't want to hold their Bitcoin on exchanges, which usually indicates that they actually want to trade it. And sometimes when this actually spikes up, it usually means that people want to sell their Bitcoin. And that's usually when we see these big uh, dumps in prices, whenever this red is going up. So this going down is good for the price increase potential of Bitcoin as well. Next, something interesting that I saw is that the total value locked in DeFi on a Binance smart chain has actually gone up quite significant, significantly in the past days. So if we take a look at since March 25th, basically four days ago, we had $14 billion uh, total value locked in DeFi of Binance Smart Chain, but now it is $18 billion. So in a matter of four days, we have $4 billion more money or more total value locked in Binance Smart Chain. So this is really good to see for Binance Smart Chain. As you probably know, I'm heavily still invested in Binance Smart Chain through Autofarm and some other platforms out there as well. And we also have a newcomer here. We have Ellipsis Finance. Personally, I would not buy this coin right now because the market cap of this coin is actually pretty high, while Venus market cap and PancakeSwap market caps are actually quite low in my opinion. So Ellipsis Finance, I would not buy it, but they have really solid uh, stable coin yield over there. I think it was closer to 100% APY on stable coins. So that's pretty cool if you want to use that, but I would not buy the native token here. And this is an official fork from uh, Curve Finance, so from an Ethereum-based pro project, now just uh, transformed over to Binance Smart Chain. But it's really nice to see that they almost instantly had $2 billion here uh, under management as well. And Autofarm, they had an official Certic audit, so you can take a look at that one as well, if you want to take a look at that. But here, here here's the thing, the total value locked in Ethereum is just not going anywhere. It's still stagnating here, while Binance Smart Chain is going up. So Ethereum is still not looking like a place to be, even though these uh, USDC settlements are actually done on Ethereum network. But eventually, if this, uh, these settlements are happening on Ethereum, I think more institutions want to have exposure to Ethereum because whenever the Ethereum 2.0 comes along, then the amount of Ethereum you have, the more say you have on the development of Ethereum network. So I think that will bring a... Uh, game theory element to Ethereum as well, that more institutions want to hold Ethereum because they have a better say or more say to the actual protocol if this becomes a settlement layer for USDC and other uh, GPDCC, CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and Visa is basically wanting to be the number one place where these settlements happen. So anyway, uh, Ethereum, it may become the uh, settlement platform of choice, but it could still become something else as well. Or there could be multiple that uh, multiple blockchains that are used for these settlements. So it's really hard to see the future just based on this. But anyway, if you are a believer of Ethereum, then you will understand this in the way that Ethereum will be the only good blockchain in the future, which may not be the case. As you already see that USTC is already being used on Matic Network, Solana, uh, Binance Smart Chain and other places as well that you have USDC available. Just I think I forgot uh, forgot about oh yeah Stellar Stellar of course. I just made a video about it last year I think. Anyway, uh, those are pretty much the news. This one thing that also happened last week and this was a dip that I was able to get at nine hundred dollars. So B SPDO actually dropped to nine hundred dollars when the peg on BDOs actually went all the way down to zero point six dollars. And when I saw 
uh, SPDO at $900. That's when I bought, uh, not a lot, but I bought six SPDOs at that time. So pretty nice gains here. Uh, I don't know if I would buy it at this price. It's certainly not as attractive as it was at $900. So if you still want to get SPDOs, you may, may want to get that if you want to. Uh, but soon when the price is actually going uh, a little bit higher from here, then the expansions continue and then uh, these will print more videos. But for now it is still contracting. But yeah, that's what happened there as well. Now let's talk about some of the other altcoins that I actually bought last week. So of course I bought the same things that I always buy. I bought sell token because it still hasn't pumped, but the fundamentals are, are just growing. I bought a huge amount of band at 12 and $13. So these were really, really nice, nicely discounted uh, last week. And still at $14, I think it's a steal. Uh, it's just a uh, cross-chain Oracle and they are announcing partnerships almost every single week. So eventually the price will have to go up. So this is something that I'm still accumulating. Uh, another one that I actually bought and actually sold it already is AVAX because I don't know what happened here. AVAX, the market cap was $500 million and the price was about, I think it was $26 when I bought it. But then this market cap actually jumped to $3.8 billion on all the places where, where, I, where I was checking it. Uh, so I don't know if it was a display error, error or what happened there, but I sold my AVAX if this is the market cap, it's a little bit too high for me. So I just sold my uh, AVAX tokens. So and, uh, that's what I did there. I uh, had some AVAX for a while though. It looked good, but I don't know what happened with the market cap here. It confused me. So I got out of it. Um, what else did I buy? Uh, did I buy? I think I forget one or two. I s oh yeah, SPDs, SPDOs I bought. Uh, what did else did I buy? Was there something else? Auto, well, not really bought more, but just waiting and accumulating more through the uh, yield farming. Was there something else? Oh, yeah, CRO. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> when I saw the news earlier today, uh, crypto.com had not yet even announced it, so I just bought a lot of CRO when it was about 20, 0 0.21. Uh, I might sell a little bit because it did not really have a, a big impact here on the price for some reason. So I might just sell it again. But yeah, I bought CRO for a short period of time. I bought more BNB actually when it was $250, uh, $255 uh, as well. Those are basically the only tokens I bought. What I'm currently looking at next uh, and my big place uh, oh yeah, I bought something called uh, what the hell? VRA was it? What was it? Veracity. So this is a coin that I saw a lot of uh, influencers shilling for the last week or so. So I bought a little bit of this because the potential of the, of this uh, protocol is pretty uh, impressive. They have a patent for something called proof proof of view. So if you are a content creator or if you are a platform that uh, streams. Uh, videos or uh, games or anything like that, uh, they can actually have a proof that it was a real viewer and not a fake viewer. And they have a pattern for that as well. So that might be in, uh, something that's worth something in the future. We'll see. But this is some uh, a coin that I actually bought. I may do a more in-depth analysis on it, but uh, honestly, a lot of the YouTubers already made about made a video about it and I saw the price retrace a little bit. So I bought a little, a little bit of this VRA tokens. I don't have it. Uh, yeah, I don't have it here as a following. I'll add it right now. VRA. Yeah, so I'll add it on my favorite list. Yeah, so I bought VRA. <laughs> that was the other token that I bought. But what I'm currently looking at are these gaming tokens because gaming is basically the next NFT thing. VRA, it's working with games as it supports uh, esports tournaments and nfts around gaming so they have some partnerships going on and so forth so this could be interesting soul is another coin that i'm actually looking to get an entry on but it's a little bit too high for me right now so i did not get an entry on soul i had sold before but i sold it at some point and there are other gaming tokens engine i'm looking at uh, i didn't have it follow it either engine is a coin that I'm looking at but I'm not 
I haven't made an entry yet just because it had this massive pump <laughs> here. But I think gaming may be the next big thing, but it's just a little bit too fast, too quick for me for, to enter. So uh, if you find a gaming coin that has not pumped super hard, that may actually be an interesting pick. Chilies, this may actually be nice because it's 39% from the top. So it, it could be a decent play here as well. And any other coins, basically, you can simply look at from all time high here to look for entry points that may be interesting. Uh, Digitex, this is a fun token. It always just pumps and dumps all the time. That's why I'm always looking at it. It may actually have a nice entry point here, but I don't know if, if that platform is ever gonna be utilized or not, but I always see it pumping and dumping all the time. That's why I'm following it. Uh, yeah, of course, auto is still under $4,000. Uh, I think it's a steal. I'm looking to for it to go to at least eight thousand dollars eventually. Mm -hmm. Venus tokens, uh, I think it's massively undervalued. So I don't know why I just haven't bought it, but I, I think I should eventually. But XVS might be really really solid uh, as well, just because the total value locked is so high, and eventually it will be listed on other exchanges except just uh, Binance as well. So that will be good for it. I think that's basically all my rambling for now. Uh, not anything like super great picks for this week. If you have good picks for your own, just look if it has a, had a re retracement and it hasn't pumped yet. It may have potentially, uh, it may potentially bump after this Bitcoin pump here. So I think altcoins are the next big play. And I think we will just consolidate here for a while, maybe touch the all time high then a retracement and then a new all-time high highs here on Bitcoin. But I think altcoins will be the bigger, better play uh, when uh, a time it just passes for at least this week. That's what I believe. Anyway, I think that's everything I had for this week. Hope you liked the video. Consider subscribing. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below what might be good coins for this week. And I uh, will see you on the next video.